Is there a shallow spot here? I just got tagged. And let oh, oh, oh. Hey guys, Lynn and Richard and Dave back again. Yesterday they started hitting suckers and Richie had an idea today because he was moving fish on the Bondi Royal Orba. We're like, let's throw a little piece of sucker meat. He obviously decided to go with a big piece of sucker meat. He had a follow on it. And then we just started rolling up. You guys will hear it on the video. He's like, is there a shallow spot here? He's like, I think I just got, oh, I got him. So the theory there is just to get the scent, eh, Rich? Yeah, pretty much going for just a little bit extra on there because they would follow it they just wouldn't quite hit it so very unorthodox but first fish of the day it worked so let's have a look at him rich for the rest of the day he's our chum <laughs> Chunky little monkey. Yeah. Good one. Beauty. Yeah. Nice that he hit the Bondi Royal Orba. Okay, let's get this one back. You don't need a push. Well, good job, Richie. Very unorthodox, but what the heck, that works. Perfect. Let's get some more. Welcome back to another breakdown. Feels like we haven't did one of these for quite a while. On Richie's Fish, and like the title of the video, if you guys are having trouble catching fish in the late fall, so that probably mid-October to, if you're in northwestern Ontario, until ice up, so we're at past turnover, so the fish are kind of free to roam all through the water column. We see a lot of fish, and especially when we're sucker rigging or jigging rubber in this case, down deep. The fish are sitting right on the bottom, and while they will go for trolling baits over top of them, casting baits, when they're sitting down in 20 or 30 feet, just don't seem to get much of a reaction out of them. So what was cool about Richie's fish, outside of the fact that he was using some cut bait on there just for scent, was we had the boat positioned over a steep break that was down about 30 feet deep, and there's one chunk of that rock, and you hear Richie's like, is there a shallow spot here? He got bumped. He was actually almost over top of this chunk of rock, and think of it just as kind of a finger or a boat-shaped chunk of rock that comes off of that main drop-off. And we had the boat sitting over top of this main drop-off, and I suspect that that fish was sitting in here, in this area here, and as Richie was kind of jigging along the bottom and he kind of got up to the top of this break that that fish was sitting right there, it probably hit him. And then that's what he thought he might have hit bottom. And then it instantly took it right after that. But for us fishing deep water and jigging deep water, we want to make contact with the bottom. And you want to look for any of those kind of secondary breaks off of the main chunk of your like your shoreline break anything that comes out in the water that could be a two to three to five foot difference lots of times you'll see muskies holding right behind them
sky. Here we go. Drop it. There he is. Little guy. Hey guys, Glenn and Dave are out. Yesterday we had a really good day with the girls and we are on our very first spot. We come up here, I kind of wanted to check this spot out just because we've had success in the past. Dave's getting this one out of the net. Just a little guy, but... It's short, but he's fat. Small one, yeah. but it's a good start. And I pretty much called it on the graph. I'm like, there's one coming up at you, Dave, and it pretty much hit it. And, yeah, within 10 seconds. And I took was... it right away. So we'll get this guy back. Hopefully we'll get a couple more here today if things go good. We'll get Dave set up with a new sucker. And we'll get going here right away. Oh yeah, he's gone. All right, so sometimes just trust in your intuition on a spot. Going into a spot where you've had success in the past, like here, works out. So we're gonna get him re-rigged and we'll continue off on this spot, another spot right close by we wanna check. And we'll just keep looking on the graph and looking for bait, looking for fish, and we'll be back with you guys right on away. The graph. Yeah, we got graphs today. Imagine that. Yesterday we had no graphs. Okay, guys, David's fish is from a different day, but it's very similar circumstances. We went to this spot, and like I said in the video, I just had an intuition that we we're going to see some fish here. couple cool things about this spot. We have deep water all the way around this point. So I got 30 feet marked here. We got 30 feet out on this side. And we have lake effect current blowing down this way to the outflow. So there's a lot going on on this point. Summertime, we're looking for fish that are sitting in this 12 to 6 foot range. So summer fish would be sitting in some of these areas here. We would expect to see them. But this time of year, we're looking for the fish that are sitting down off of the edges of these breaks. So this 12 foot break breaks very steep down to about 30 feet. As we brought the boat around that point, Dave's line, I'll draw it on this side even though it was on the other, was dragging back and it probably made contact right off of that point there. The big takeaway there is that fish was probably sitting there looking up current, waiting for bait to come around or get blown down past that point. As we went around, I watched the fish come up off the graph towards Dave's sucker. Like Dave said in the video, about 10 seconds later, I'd picked up the sucker. But this is a prime spot for jigging as well. And if we were to jig this spot, we would just jig all the way around here in that deep water transition. Pretty standard stuff. Look for those steep break lines. And again, we're looking for that slightly second break on any main point. Deep water, jig some deep water and you guys will put some more fish in the boat in the fall.